call the member for Hunter. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. And on behalf of, I hope, uh, all members uh, of the House, I apologise to that rather large group of visitors in the Speaker's Gallery who could take no more during the contribution by the member for Indi and walked out uh, en masse. And I can't blame them, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, because that really was what I would describe a rather embarrassing uh, contribution, full of bluster, no facts, and of course, typically a scare campaign. But the member for Indi wasn't on her own, of course. Uh, the shadow treasury, treasurer wasn't much better. Uh, I do excuse him just a little. He, he used his contribution to say something about the national accounts, which of course were released today. And as, as shadow treasurer, I would expect him to take any opportunity he can uh, to do so. So we'll, we'll go easy on the shadow treasurer. Not a bad contribution. Uh, tried to say a few positive things. The important thing is, of course, that he totally ignored his leader's own MPI. And we've seen from the shadow treasurer this week, uh, mainly via his rather interesting contribution by way of a letter to the Australian Financial Review, that at the moment he's a, he's a bit on the fence, Mr Deputy Speaker, a bit on the fence. He doesn't know which way to jump at this stage because there's a heavy bit of competition going on between the current leader and, of course, the member for Wentworth sitting at the table, and Joe just doesn't know which way to jump. Now, now, now Mr Deputy Speaker, that brings me to the, what I thought was the most embarrassing contribution of all, and that was the contribution of the Leader of the Opposition. He put up an MPI in this place on a substantive issue, I think one worth debating at carbon, or a carbon constraint uh, is the um, most interesting and topical issue of debate in this country at the moment. But he didn't say anything about it, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. He came in here with not one fact, uh, no thoughtful thinking, no real contribution to make on the debate, but instead he made a leadership speech. He made a leadership speech full of one-liners, one-liners which he was hoping would rally those sitting behind him and at a crucial time for him when he's struggling to maintain their support. But the really interesting thing about him introducing the MPI on this topic is this. This debate is not about climate change, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's not about whether the globe is warming. It's not even about whether man makes a contribution to that heating. Because Mr Abbott accepts that. The Leader of the Opposition accepts that. He accepts, accepts it so fulsomely that he's got a policy to address it. Now, we don't like the policy, and the broader Australian community won't like the policy when they come to understand it, because it's a policy to tax them more and to take that money and use it to subsidise the big polluters, sure. something they will, of course, uh, uh, greet with open arms, but, of course, there will be nothing in it to ensure that they use that money for the purposes for which it's intended. And, of course, the member for Wentworth on Late Line belled the cat and made the point that this is a road to everywhere or nowhere, I'm not sure which, but certainly it's a policy the cost for which cannot be controlled. And we appreciate the member for Wentworth's very, very honest contribution uh, on that topic. Now, now, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm, I'm going to share the worst kept secret uh, in the place, and that is that the Chief Government Whip has some say in who contributes to the MPI debate. Uh, I know you'll be shocked, uh, my colleagues, but that is a fact. So today, anticipating the low-brow contribution we'd get from the Leader of the Opposition, I thought, well, let's have a guy from the Hunter and let's have a guy from the Illawarra. And it's interesting because the Leader of the Opposition used up, I wish I had the clock running, at least 33 per cent of his contribution going around the electorates. What about the member for Hunter? What's he going to do? What about the member for such and such? What's he going to do? Now, another confession, Mr Deputy Speaker, I used to occasionally do this in opposition too. You know, 30 minutes on a tax bill, you know, you're struggling sometimes, so what you do is you fill it up by going around each electorate and, you know, introducing a bit of politics, I suppose, uh, into the debate. I know some, some people listening to the debate will be shocked, but I'm happy, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm happy in this place to solemnly declare and confess uh, my sins of the past. And that's exactly what the Leader of the Opposition did today. How, how, sad, how sad is it, Mr Deputy Speaker, when the Leader 
of the opposition in this country can't come in here for 15 minutes and make a constructive contribution to the biggest debate in this country at the moment <laughs> without putting in a filler, without spending five minutes of his time running a scare campaign seat by seat. Well, I, I listened to the me me member for Throsby and I congratulate on him on his uh, response to the scare campaign uh, from the Leader of the, of, of the Opposition. He had nothing to say, no facts. I mean, the government hasn't even released the detail uh, of its policy, but don't worry, we'll soon. And, and therefore, by definition, by definition, Mr Deputy Speaker, everything the Leader of the Opposition said today has to be confected, has to be made up. There can be no other explanation for the way in which he made uh, his contribution today. Now, I want to say something very importantly about the Hunter, because again, like the Member for Throsby and others, um, the Leader of the Opposition had a bit to say about the impact in certain regions. Well, let me let him in on a surprise, Mr Deputy Speaker. The overwhelming majority of people in the Hunter want us to do something about global warming. They want us to take a responsible approach, and that's what we will do. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, here, here, here is the point. Here is the point. Here is the point the Leader of the Opposition, the leader of the opposition misses. The, the mining union, and the unions generally in the Hunter Valley, support action on climate change. They support a carbon constraint. They want their industries to be sustainable into the future, Mr Deputy Speaker. And sensibly, they are coming with us uh, on that front. So all this bluster from the Leader of the Opposition about the member for Hunter, you know, has he told his workers yet? Well, my workers tell me, Mr Deputy Speaker. My workers come to me and say, we want you to ensure that our jobs in the Hunter are sustainable. And indeed, that applies to manufacturing too, Mr Deputy Speaker. There are only real two threats to manufacturing at the moment. One, as has been mentioned, is the very high Australian dollar. The other is the abandonment by, on the part of the coalition to a, a commitment to the market and market-based policies. The best thing we can do for manufacturing in this country, Mr Deputy Speaker, is to put them on a sustainable footing and, and to introduce new opportunities through a uh, carbon-constrained uh, world, and that's what we will do. The other point he misses, of course, is this. Have a look at the uh, projections on the um, consumption of energy uh, in this country uh, into the future. Now, uh, the Leader of the Opposition rhetorically said, well, how many factories can you power off solar? You know, what a ridiculous thing to say. The Hunter produces something like 80 per cent of, of New South Wales electricity consumption, 80 per cent. In the future, New South Wales will need all the coal-fired and, co and gas-fired electricity we can produce in the Hunter, but it will need to keep up with that demand significant renewable energy as well. And the Hunter is very, very well placed. We've already got a foot in the door on solar. We've had solar in the Upper Hunter for some time now. We have the expertise. The Prime Minister talked during question time about the significant investment we are making in solar in the Hunter Valley. Mr Deputy Speaker, um, those experts that determine these things have come to the conclusion that the Upper Hunter is the second best geographical region in the country for geothermal energy. What a great opportunity for the Hunter. Wind mapping done by the New South Wales demonstrates that the Upper Hunter around Scone is, I think, the second best place in New South Wales for wind technology. So these are the big opportunities for the Hunter. Now, even if there, there are still some sceptics on the other side, they should ask themselves this. Um, even if you don't believe in climate change, even if you don't believe in, in uh, man's contribution, why is it that a number of big polluters continue to pump their pollution into the sky without charge, but yet when the, me the member for Wentworth goes to the council tip with his box trailer, having done, having done the clippings uh, around his stately mansion, he has to pay the council for the right to dump that waste. Why is it that small business people in this country, those who produce waste, maybe a plumber who would, would end up with significant waste at the end of a working trip, has to pay the local council tip when he goes to the dump, yet the polluters continue to freely emit their pollution, including carbon, 
into the atmosphere. That is a distortion of the market, and what the government will do is remove that distortion and produce e uh, the economic efficiencies time in those has markets. Expired. Order. The discussion apparently has concluded.